Well, good day and welcome to you. It is August the 25th, and I hope you're having a great day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs if you've never listened to these videos before, and welcome you back if you have. And simply point out, if you want to know more about this information, I do think educating yourself is probably the best thing to do. And you can do it however you want to do it. I have included links to websites that I think give you really good background information in the description portion of these videos. So hopefully you'll check them out. All right, now I also would like to give a shout out to Spirit, Spirit Watcher 178, Mr. Good Sleep for asking questions this go around. And I always encourage questions. You can post your questions in the comment section. If you have a comment and you want to post your comment, that's fine too. As long as it's not of a trolling nature or it gets out of hand in terms of just being obnoxious, as long as it doesn't have a link to another YouTube channel or a website, I leave them up. I'll even address them from time to time if I think they add to the discussion. So. I appreciate everybody that takes time out of the day to do that. So I, hopefully that will encourage you or at least inspire you to, to uh, post a comment or ask a question. All right. Now, I don't know if I can get to both these questions. I'll try. Uh, but if I can't get to the second question, I will address it and try to answer it in the next video. How about that? But let me start with Mr. Good Sleep. Thanks for the videos. Well, you are welcome. It's a pleasure. I always enjoy doing it. Hopefully you find them informative. Have you ever heard of Billy Mayer, the man who speaks with the Palladians? I wonder if there is a connection. So, when I read your question yesterday and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to answer it, I wanted to start with this, okay, because this is kind of gives you, might give you a better um, idea of what I think my role is in all this information. I'm not an authority on anything, okay? I know you're not asking me necessarily for their opinion. People ask me my opinion all the time about different authors or people claiming to have a connection with a master or, or was with beings from other dimensions or whatever. And I always decline to answer it. And I'm taking my cues from Benjamin Krem, who really is where the source of this information is coming from. And when he was asked those questions, he would always decline to answer those questions on the basis that he didn't see it as his role to, to comment on those things. Now, if you were, if that person was dead, he would comment about it. If they were a politician, well, they were fair game for his criticism or praise either way. But for the most part, when it came to people who were talking about the masters or the ascended masters, whatever, or whatever, claiming to channel these masters or have contact with UFOs and aliens, he always declined to answer it. And I just don't see it as something that I can do because of it. You know, I, I, I could be wrong. You know what I mean? I, I, I know a lot about this information, but I don't know everything about everything. So, and I don't claim to. And so I don't want to say something, I don't want to comment about somebody that I don't know that much about and end up being incorrect. But I will say this, okay? Because I'll try to answer some of the question or a question in a way that hopefully will be more informative about the connection between uh, the UFOs and this information and the people who are occupying the UFOs and that kind of thing. And in a roundabout way, kind of answer, you know, what I think... Um, of Billy Mayer and his work. Okay. So just take it for what it is. But anyway, when it comes to UFOs, okay, now I typically subscribe to the school of thought that's coming from uh, George Adamski and Benjamin Krem. Both uh, websites to their information, I have links to their websites uh, in the description portion of these videos. So you can check them out. You can see videos with Benjamin Krem. You can read all about what he thinks about UFOs and so forth. But also, when it comes to George Adamski, you can even read some of his books online. And I do recommend Inside the Spaceships or Inside the Flying Saucers or something like that is the name of his book, I think. And it was a wonderful book about his contacts with uh, the, what he would call the Space Brothers. But according to both these men who claim to have contact with, with the Space Brothers, they said that uh, all the, the, the space brothers and the, the higher humanity that come here are coming from no farther than our own solar system. And they're coming from mainly Mars and Venus. Now, I'm going to explain why science and scientists don't have any evidence of people living on, on those planets. And there's an explanation as to why. But 
that's where they say they're coming from. Not from another dimension, not from another time, not from another galaxy or anything like that, but just in our own solar system. And I know there's a lot of theories about where, where they're coming from, how they look, what their purpose is here, what they mean for humanity and that kind of thing. But according to them, they're coming from the, our solar system and they're only here to help us. And they, have, they mean us no harm and they're on a spiritual mission. And the connection between the humanity on our planet and the planets in our solar system will only go deeper and broader as time goes on. But right now we're in the beginning stages of connecting with them. And so to say that, that somebody's coming from the Pleiadians or from, like I said, from another galaxy, according to these two individuals, and like I said, I subscribe to what they have to say about it, um, they say there's no truth to any of that. Now, there, there are and there is evidence of UFO activity, obviously, right? And more and more people are taking videos and taking photographs, and it's a lot easier to, to take a photograph and a video with a phone than it is to try to find a camera somewhere, you know, and then it might be too late. Because I know for myself, the times that I've seen UFOs, I didn't have a camera on. <laughs> so it was like it was before kind of uh, camera phones, you know, and those kind of things were easily accessible or I would have taken a video or a picture of it, but I didn't have it, you know? So you only have my word to go on that I've seen UFOs before, but, um, they are here for, for several reasons. And they've been here since the dawn of time, helping humanity out is really what it amounts to. But here recently they've been here. They're, they're the two main missions of the UFOs and the occupants within those UFOs the two main reasons, one is to wake humanity up to the fact that there is life on other planets and we're not alone, which is a huge revelation for the vast majority of humanity. Most people have heard that there maybe is life on other planets or they believe that maybe there's life on other planets, but they don't really know for sure. And in not so distant future, we'll know for sure. We'll all know for sure that there's life on other planets. We'll have evidence of it. And it's coming out more and more and more every day. Even to the point where governments who have tried to keep that information from their own people, such as the United States, which is the biggest instigator in that, and then maybe the British government and some of the other NATO nations have had that been their main policy is to not, is to deny the existence of UFOs. And now it's not to even confirm nor deny it, just to kind of let it go. But more and more is coming out, so they're having a harder, harder time to, of denying it to the point where now they're even kind of starting to talk about it a little bit and even declassify information and different videos that typically up until this point was, was considered classified information is now being declassified to where we can see some of it. And I had talked about it a couple years ago, but one of the things that I thought was quite extraordinary was there was a little article online about some meetings between the upper echelon of the Pentagon and the president at the time was Donald Trump and the senior members of Congress about UFO activity. And I remember thinking, I was like, even though they're not really confirming it and denying it or denying it, they are confirming this activity because there's no way that somebody would, would put their reputation and their job on the line and go to the president of the United States or senior members of Congress if they didn't know that there was, this was true. So in that roundabout way, it did confirm that there is UFO activity. And the British government has started to declassify their files over the years because they, according to them, no longer see them as a national security threat. But more and more, it's becoming less and less taboo. In fact, all the things that we talk about on this channel, I think UFO activity is probably the least taboo topic that we talk about here. But the information about the masters will eventually be the same kind of way once we see Maitreya out and start to see these masters. It won't be quite as alarming for some and you know, it won't create such an uncertainty for others. It'll be more of, oh, okay, yeah, of course. You know, it's always been like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's the same kind of deal with the UFOs. If you go back 30 or 40 years ago, if you t remember talking about it with your family or friends, if you're that old, it was a taboo topic to talk about. Now it's like, you know, people talk about it all the time. You see videos on YouTube all the time. It doesn't create such a stir like it used to because it's becoming more and more mainstream. The exo esoteric knowledge is now becoming exoteric knowledge. But the other purpose of why they're here is very much also in relation to this information it has to do with the environment. And according to both George Adamski and Benjamin Krem, one of the greatest spiritual missions of 
the occupants on these UFOs is helping to clean up the environment because we are destroying the environment at a very alarming pace. Now, when it comes to the environmental discussion, right, it's mainly about what? Climate change. Now, the environmentalist would say that it's 100% caused by man. That's the reason why the atmosphere is heating up. The institutionalist, the conservative, the anti-environmentalist, for lack of a better word, would say it's, ah, it's, 20, it's 100% natural causes. There's no reason to be alarmed about it. If you go back and look at some of the core ice samples that they pulled from the Arctic and the Antarctic can prove that millennia ago, the temperature and, and all throughout history, based on the way that the ice has melted and, and refroze and all that kind of stuff, that the atmosphere did heat up from time to time. And that's true, right? So, but they're both right and they're both wrong because according to the masters, it's a combination of both very much exacerbated by the misuse and the harm that man is doing, but it's also of natural causes. It's it said it's about 80, 20, 80% man-made 20% of natural causes. And we have a lot more people living on the planet than we did 10,000 years ago. So that obviously is having an effect on the environment. So we have to do something about it. It's very dangerous that we do something about it. But here's the thing, okay? And this is very much in line with why the UFOs are here, why we're starting to see more and more of them, why we're seeing the evidence of them. It has to do with another kind of pollution other than greenhouse gases. It has to do with nuclear radiation. And this also goes hand in hand with why we don't see and have any evidence on these other planets like Venus and like Mars of any kind of humanity on there because they're not living on the three levels of physicality that we're familiar with, get solid, liquid, and gas. They're living on four, the, one or other of the four other levels of physicality called the etheric. The pollution that's causing the most harm, the nuclear radiation, is, is the reason why it's causing harm. The reason why nobody even knows that it's there is because it's on the etheric levels. So let me explain. Science postulates that there's just solid, liquid, and gas, and that's it. Well, the masters will tell you that there's actually four levels of physicality above gas that they call the etheric planes. It was discovered scientifically some years ago by a gentleman named Willem Reich. Now, most people have never heard this man's name, let alone know that he had a discovery that really is quite extraordinary, and we should all know about it, but nobody really knows about it. He actually discovered the lowest level of, etheric, of the etheric planes. He called it the organ. And by whatever name you call it, it's there. And, but there's three other levels of it other than the one that he discovered. And that's where these humanity is, that's where they're living on these planets. So you go to Venus, you're not gonna see anybody unless you have etheric vision. If you go to Mars, you're not gonna see anybody. But there's more people living on Mars than there are on this planet. There's nine and a half billion people living on Mars and it's a much, much smaller planet than ours. And so, tremendous technology, tremendous civilization, and it's there, but we would, if you were to go there on a spaceship, you would, or a rocket or whatever, you would not see anybody. And like I said, unless you had etheric vision or they lowered their vibration down enough to where you could see them. So. They come here, again, to wake us up gently over time, but also to help clean up the environment because the pollution that's causing the most harm is so fine, so indistinguishable. You know, we can't see it. We can't smell it. We can't taste it. There's no residue of, of pollution, but it's everywhere. And it's of this nuclear radiation. In fact, our Geiger counters... And the scientists that use those Geiger counters would deny that there's any pollution because their Geiger counters aren't registering any activity. You could stick it right up to the side of a nuclear reactor and there's nothing. So they say, hey, there's no leak. Well, the only reason why they're not registering anything is because it's a very crude way of measuring radiation. And the radiation from any nuclear reactor anywhere in the world, whether it's a power plant or a naval vessel, or a missile, or the way that we store nuclear radiation after we use it, that pollution goes right through the lead, no problem, right through the concrete, and right out into the atmosphere. So if you're living anywhere near a nuclear power plant, it's pretty bad. And even if you're living as far away as you possibly could from a nuclear power plant, it's still bad because the pollution is so fine and light, it just goes right up into the upper atmosphere, and then eventually every raindrop, according to the masters, has some form of radiation pollution in it. 
So it's everywhere. In fact, even if you closed off your whole house and locked the windows and you know boarded up everything, it still goes right through your walls. So even in all our rooms in our house, is nothing but nuclear radiation just saturated everywhere. Can you imagine if you actually could see it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it'd be alarming, wouldn't it? But we don't. It's invisible to us. They call it the invisible peril. Now, we would be nearly dead, if not totally dead, if it wasn't for the work and activity of these space brothers cleaning up the atmosphere in the way that they're doing, according to the masters. Now, they have a future role for humanity, too, which will eventually be giving some of their technology known as the technology of light. Once humanity, as by the masters and Maitreya, see that humanity has put war behind us forever, Maitreya will allow them to give us the technology that they use to power their vehicles, power their cities, use in medicine to recreate organs and those kind of things, to create artifacts, to create food and those kind of things. The way that you would think in terms of you know, any kind of science fiction, you know, being able to create anything or travel, they have. And they'll eventually give us that technology so we won't even have to invent it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll be able to just use it the way that they use it. But it's such, it's such a dangerous technology in the wrong hands that if, it was, if there was anybody that wanted to use it for warfare, it could destroy us even more than a nuclear bomb. So we have to put war behind us forever before they're willing to give us that technology. But it will revolutionize life on this planet. So... Eventually, it's been said that Maitreya will be asked about uh, UFOs, and he'll confirm the fact that they are here, that there is life on other planets, and where they're coming from, and what their purpose is. But uh, hopefully that kind of adds to it a little bit. But according to the Masters, there's, no, there's nobody coming from the Pleiadian system or any other dimension or time. It, they're only coming from our sister planets in our solar system. And it was confirmed by also by... Um, George Adamski and Benjamin Krem, who claim to have contacts with them. But like I said, I'm just presenting this information for you to look at and for you to consider yourself. But the one thing, if you read any of George Adamski's books, he not only met them, also claimed to ride in their spaceships and so forth, but he said, and same thing with Benjamin Krem, that they look like us. They don't look anything out of the ordinary. In fact, when he was um, talking with some of them, they were speaking in it. They were talking in a diner together. They were sitting around a table, and they didn't draw any attention to themselves as being anything other than humanity. So, and they were very concerned about the problems of humanity, very aware of what's going on here, because what we do here actually affects them. They don't, and so it harms them in that way too. So that's why they're here helping us. They see us as one family, not as separate. You know, we don't think like that yet, right? In terms of a global community or a galactic community they only we're having a harder time even seeing our our own little town as being a part of ourselves you know what i mean but they are very concerned about the problems of the world they're very concerned about the environmental problem they're very concerned about the violence on this planet now to hopefully address any kind of concerns that somebody might have about them being violent uh george adamski remarked about this one woman who was from i think saturn i think and with the way he described her, in my mind, I pictured Linda Carter, you know, who played the first Wonder Woman on television back in the 70s. He said she was very beautiful with long brown hair. So that was the first <laughs> person that I could think of that he, that he was talking about because I always thought Linda Carter was so beautiful. But anyway, she even said to him that when it comes to violence against them, they would choose nonviolence and would rather die than to defend themselves. Because if they were to defend themselves and accidentally harm that other person, then it would cause them harm in the end. So they live within the law of cause and effect. They live within the law of harmlessness, live within the law of free will. So that's why they're waking humanity up, but it's a slow process. But they're, like I said, very, very, very concerned about the problems of humanity are here helping us as much as they can. And some, according to both Benjamin Krem and George Adamski, there are people living among us who are also a part or from these other planets. Now, some of them fell here. You know, people like Leonardo da Vinci, Abraham Lincoln are not, were not from this planetary evolution. They were from other planets. Incarnated here, they might have, I mean, I'm sure Leonardo da Vinci did. I don't know if Abraham Lincoln knew where he was from, but according to the masters, he's not from this planet. And there's other ones, Shakespeare was not from this planet and so forth. They might have, he might have known, he might not have, right? But 
there are people who don't know necessarily that they're from another planet, but it's a very tiny amount. There's not, it's not very pop. It's not a very common thing, but there are other people who are living amongst us who know very well and very conscious, according to George Adamski, knew exactly where they were from, how long they'd been here because they didn't incarnate here. They just came here and started working in some kind of capacity or another. There were even some, according to Ben, within some of the uh, governments. Um, some of them were advisors to presidents even. And the one that I thought was quite extraordinary was, if you remember the speech that John Kennedy gave right after the Cuban Missile Crisis, where he said, you know, we, we all inhabit the same planet, we all breathe the same air, we all cherish our children's future or something to that effect. That actually came from uh, a space brother who was one of his advisors. He wasn't an upper level advisor or senior advisor, he was a mid-level advisor who for some, in some way was able to get John Kennedy's ear and told him, this is what you should say, or maybe this is what something that you could say that could help. And there was more to what he said, and John Kennedy didn't say everything that he said, but that was the one thing that uh, he said. And it's hands down the single biggest, most powerful and most memorable thing that John Kennedy ever said. So quite extraordinary stuff, but they're only here to help working in different ways, but mainly here to wake humanity up to them being here, but also waking humanity up to the fact that we're destroying our environment and helping along the way and kind of keeping us together until then. So is there a connection? Yes, there is a very distinct connection between Maitreya and these masters coming back into the world and more and more information coming out about the UFOs. But like I said, just for you to look at and for you to consider for yourself. But I really do appreciate the question and I will have to get to... Um, the other question in another video. I do appreciate it. You guys take care. Have a great Remember day. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.